This video explains how to use the Nanslow Remote Gas Chromatograph, or GC. The first thing you'll want to do once you log into the system is to call into the conference call number using the information on the screen. Of course, this number and access code will not be the one that you'll call. It'll, it will be there on the screen when you log in for your lab session. If you have trouble, you can email us at the email address that's also listed on the screen. This conference call is how you'll communicate with your lab partners and with the lab techs. To take control of the interface, you right-click and request control of VI. When you're done using or being in control and want to pass it to somebody else, you also right-click uh, or select release control of VI. And this will allow someone else to take over and manipulate the equipment. You can control the cameras using the pan tilt zoom controls on the screen or the preset buttons which allow you to um, quickly move to different parts of the apparatus. For this particular setup, here is the equipment involved. We can use preset 2 to monitor the temperature of the GC as we do our experiment. We change the profile information as necessary from our lab procedure and click Submit Profile to send it to the machine. Now the GC will come up to operating temperature, which takes a while, so we'll speed it up a bit. You'll notice that often the GC will overshoot the set temperature just uh, by a degree or two, uh, and then come back down to uh, what you have set it at. Uh, that's normal behavior. Um, this entire process, going from uh, room temperature to about 90 degrees Celsius, takes about five or six minutes in real time. Once it has achieved the proper pressure and temperature settings, the inject and collect button will become available so that you can begin the, the experiment. Once you click Inject and Collect, the robotic pumping system will deliver the correct amount of sample and the graph will start to be collected. Clicking on the Graph tab will show you what this looks like. Initially, the data will be very noisy uh, and kind of choppy looking, but this will smooth out as soon as the chemicals start to work their way out of the end of the gas chromatograph column and impact on the detector. Once this happens, you'll see a dramatic change in the scale on the left side of the graph, which technically is called a chromatogram. This chromatogram can be exported and saved on your computer, and we'll see how to do that in just a little while. Once the real signal begins to be graphed on the chromatogram, we'll speed things up a bit as well. This entire process for this particular set of um, profile settings will take five minutes for the entire run to occur. So we can see separate peaks for separate chemicals as they exit the chromatograph column. Once the chromatogram is completed, you want to analyze it to determine where the peaks are located and perhaps their intensity. And you can do this by clicking on the cursor button that is located on the left side of the control panel. Once you have it placed on a particular peak or location, you can tell where that is on the x-axis and the y-axis from the cursor box that is on the screen. You can also zoom out to show the full scale of the chromatogram by clicking this button. And zoom in by clicking this button and selecting the portion of the chromatogram that you wish to examine more closely. When you do this, you might lose the cursor in that case, just click the cursor off and back on again, 
and it will appear in the middle of the screen. You'll probably have to click the cursor control button in order to grab control of the cursor again so that you can move it around. You can also move it back and forth by small amounts with these buttons here. Once you have a chromatogram on the screen and you wish to export it to your computer, click the Export to Clipboard button. You won't see anything happen, but when you go to a document and select Edit and Paste, or Control V in some cases, the chromatogram will be pasted into your document. You can also copy and paste the graph data to a spreadsheet by selecting Graph Data in the drop-down box, clicking Export to Clipboard, and then pasting that data into a spreadsheet program of some kind, again with Edit and Paste. Once you've done this, you can save the files to your computer for use later in your lab report. Once you've saved the data to your computer, you can now click back on the Profile tab at the top left corner and enter new data for a new profile and submit that profile and do another run. At the bottom of the screen, there are some buttons that uh, you might find useful. There's a short survey that we'd like you to take at the end of the lab, an introductory video link in case you didn't watch that already, and a reload page button, which is really the only way you can reload the page if you have some problem and you need to do that.